Prioritize booting process. Let's spend a while on the boot sequence and timing while we are executing the code with Prioritize. So after the reset, we've got this hardware part, hardware dependent, and we are starting from configuration of the CPU clocks. Then we are initializing the static and global variables that contains only the zero value. So this is the BSS section. Then there is an initialization of the variables that contains a value other than zero, so initialized variables. And uh, there is a part uh, to configure the hardware which is used within the, within the system. After this, there is a freer test related uh, part. What you can see here below, it is based on some calculations presented on the free RTOS FAQs based on Cortex and free devices. At the beginning, uh, free RTOS is creating the application queues, semaphores and mutexes. It is taking more or less 500 CPU clock cycles per object. Then it is creating the application tasks. It is a bit uh, bigger part, so it's uh, more or less 1,100 CPU clock cycles per task. And it is starting the RTOS scheduler, which is more or less 1,200 CPU clock cycles. Idle task. Idle task uh, is a task which is generated automatically, created automatically by the scheduler after it is started. This task uh, is executed always when the ready task list is empty. Its code is stored uh, within task C file uh, within the macro ta port task function. The idle task is performing the following list of operations in endless loop. At the beginning it is checking the list of the deleted tasks and uh, it is cleaning the memory. It is an important point because uh, while we decide to delete the task, it is not deleted automatically from the RAM, but it will be deleted in the first execution of the idle task after this operation. Then the second role of an idle task is, uh, let's see, is execution of the task yield function if we are not using preemption. So task yield means that we are immediately exiting the task code, the idle task code, and we are giving the chance uh, for other tasks to be executed. Then, if there is uh, another task waiting, the idle task is immediately exiting the running state and going to the, to the ready one. And uh, if it's not the case, so if it's the only one which is executed at the moment, and we have enabled the idle hook, so if we set the config use idle hook to one, there would be the application idle hook code execution. And uh, this code uh, is used for some debug purposes, just to check how much time is spent within the idle task. It can be used for this way on the, let's say, startup on the development phase. The, one of the most important roles of the idle task is uh, performing the low power entrance. If we configure the config use tickless idle to any value to one or to two, we can enter into the selected low power mode. By default, it would be a sleep mode, but uh, as you can see from the next sections of this training, we can use here as well the stop modes, which are limiting the current consumption of the application quite heavily and uh, which are still allowing us to wake up from the low power mode and continue the free RTOS uh, operations after wake up. Let's have a look uh, how free RTOS starts step by step. We are starting free RTOS by calling OS kernel start function, usually from main.c file. This is uh, using the CMC OS API. This function is calling vtask start scheduler within CMC's underscore OS C file. This function, as you can see, this is the free RTOS API one. And this function is creating the idle task using the function xtask create. Then it is disabling the operating system interrupts by calling the file that the macro port disable interrupt to be sure that no tick will happen before we will start the scheduler. So after disabling operating system related interrupts, we are starting the scheduler by calling the function export start scheduler. This function within port.c file is configuring the lowest priority level for Cystic and PentSV, so the interrupts which are responsible for the task switching, context switching within the operating system. 
Then it is starting the timer that generates the tick, so the time slice for each task. In Cortex-M architecture, it is usually the SysTick. And this is the time when FPU, so flow tick point unit, is enabled if we are working with Cortex-M4 or M7 devices. After this, there is, uh, let's say, the call, which is starting the first task. It is done by calling the function PRV port start first task function. So PRV port start first task function from port.c file, usually it is written in assembler. It is locating the stack and setting the main stack pointer MSP used by the OS at the beginning of this stack. Of this stack, I mean of the heap booked for the FreeRT OS. Then it is enabling all the interrupts and it is triggering by software SVC, system call interrupt, which is the software interrupt and uh, within this interrupt, there is a handler called vport svc handler, located again in a port.c file. And uh, this handler is restoring the context. It's loading the task control block of the first task with highest priority from the ready list. And it's starting execution of this task. From this moment, operating system is fully operational and is starting executing the first task. Thank you for watching this video.